Hey guys, so today I'm here with a tour of the operating system on the Amazon Kindle Fire. I've been playing around with this for a day or so now, and I've got some thoughts. Some good, some not so good, so I figured I'd go ahead and share with you guys. So the first thing is that this runs on Android 2.3, aka Gingerbread. Uh, now Android is a very popular OS for phones, as many of you guys will most likely know, and this is a good and bad thing. Now the way Amazon talks, this is like an all new, you know, they've redesigned it, and they basically just kind of took some pieces of Android and added a lot of their own. And it is true, this is a very customized experience, this doesn't look like any Android device I've ever tried. However, Android is still definitely here, and uh, to be honest, I don't really think of this as an all new OS, I really think of this as Android with a skin. So I'll go ahead and give you guys a quick walkthrough. Up top left here is where our notifications are. So there's, it's very similar to Android. Instead of just dragging it down, you just tap it. And for example, here we go. We have a notification error about a playback error, rather. Uh, so it's really nice to know. We also do have our time. And up here is where we go ahead and select many of our different controls. Now this is very important. The Amazon Kindle Fire lacks several key buttons, as well as a home button. And a, or, I'm sorry, as far as physical buttons go, it lacks a home button as well as a volume control. Uh, now this is uh, this is a bit of a problem for me. However, all of this is in the OS. So for example, right down here, if you tap on that. That's the home button. And if I want to change the volume, I can certainly do that from right here. Uh, now, while there's nothing wrong with the way it is in the OS, uh, the problem is these are kind of buttons I'd like to, you know, be able to have on the device. So, for example, you know, if I was listening to music last night, that's actually a perfect example. I was listening to music last night. Um, I was listening to it on the speakers, and I plugged my headphones in, and the volume, I had it blasting on the speakers, and I listened to it on my headphones. It absolutely just blasted my ears out because I didn't change the volume. And so instead of just being able to, you know, hit it real fast or anything, I had to go in while I was killing my ears, I had to hit this, and then hit volume, and then drag it down, which was a big pain in the ass, and it really hurt my ears. <laughs> so I don't mean to be complaining or anything, but it is a bit of a problem how there's no buttons like that. But enough of that, let's go ahead and continue on with the tour. So right here we have a search menu. Uh, now the keyboard on this is actually fantastic. I really, really do like it. Uh, you know, it's a nice size on a seven inch screen, so we can type out whatever we want. So let's just go ahead and type out Duncan33303. Yeah, the keyboard, I can't say enough about that. Um, the keyboard really does work well. It's very similar to the Android, but I believe they've reskinned it a little bit. But yeah, so uh, from the search menu, we can search from our library. So if we had any you know, video or content like that, we can tap over here and search for the web. So it'll pull up all kinds of web searches like that. So it's kind of a nice thing to do, uh, allow you to search and all that kind of stuff just straight from the device. Now up here we do have a variety of different like hot links to, well, I don't know, suppose not hot links, but links to normal applications. So for example, we can go to newsstand. I'll try to be brief here, maybe give you guys a little example. Actually, let me, let me show you guys books since I actually have some books on here. So for example, in books we have a couple of options. So we can pick on the cloud. So these are all the books that I have purchased or you know gotten through Amazon. Um, on top of that, we can also look at the ones that are on the device itself. And if we want to come over here, and let's say I want to go ahead and continue reading one of these books, I can just simply tap on it and it will download and it will be on the device and it'll be good to go. Uh, this works really quite nicely and I do like how they've integrated all these Amazon services. If I want to click over here, it will take me to the Amazon store where I can buy more books, which is uh, yeah, kind of uh, obvious, but yeah, definitely does work very nice. I like how they did this. Uh, same thing goes for music, video, uh, all that kind of stuff. It works quite nicely. I'll kind of skip on that to save on time, but I will show you guys apps. Now apps are, well of course this does have an app store, it is a full tablet, and there are quite a few apps that come installed, uh, I've installed a few of these like Netflix and well, most of these have installed, but it does come with some major ones such as the email application, Facebook, contacts, quick office, and a couple of others like that. So again, this is on my device, if I had any apps that I had purchased, for example here's a couple of them that come pre-installed, Pandora, etc, etc, I can just simply tap on them since they've been pre-purchased I suppose, but they don't actually come on the device. And again, I can come to the store and browse through. I won't get too in depth into this part. However, there are quite a few uh, different applications and they do have one major free app every day. So for example, today it's going to be Bejeweled 2, which actually, I don't have to probably pick that one up. I like Bejeweled, uh, but there are lots of different apps. It's not as big of an, uh, a marketplace as, for example, the Android market, which you cannot easily get on here. Uh, you can sideload it if you want, but it doesn't come pre-installed or anything like that. And while I don't really have a major problem with the Amazon App Store, it is just nothing spectacular. All right, so we're about done here. Of course, we have this little carousel. This is all of our most recent applications. There's nothing we can do about this. So if you want to say, I want to get rid of this, you can't swipe it or anything like that. Uh, basically, the only way to get rid of something like this is just to let it scroll back forever. So, uh, I mean, it's nice. I mean, you see here we have books, we have applications, music. 
uh, web page, pretty much anything you do on the device will show up here. Uh, but I definitely would like an option to go ahead and you know, swipe some things away. And if we want to scroll down here, we have what's known as a dock, so we can add some certain things. So uh, the nice thing is we can add anything we want here. So let's say I want to add a book, simply hold on, add to favorites. And if we scroll in here, bam, we have a link to the book, and it'll of course take us right there. Uh, so anyway, guys, this is going to be about it for my tour of the operating system on the Amazon Kindle Fire. Uh, definitely uh, some pros and cons. Uh, the responsiveness isn't amazing. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell on a demo. You really have to get your hands on one and feel it for yourself. Uh, for a $200 tablet, I don't really have any problems, but uh, there's it could be a little bit quick. I, I, I just leave it at that. You definitely, I really, really recommend before you buy one of these, to test it out. You know, kind of get your hands on it and see how responsive it is and all that kind of stuff because it's kind of hard to show you guys in a video. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to leave it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more videos on the Kindle Fire, be sure to subscribe.